concrete, semi-concrete, and abstract in mathematics. But we can use concrete, semi-concrete, and abstract in anything we do, right? Because in the literature, if the kids have something like a teddy bear, so if I'm doing, let's say Alexander who used to be rich last Sunday, I want to have money now, right? I want them to have that ability to see what that dollar looks like and how he's spending it. I also want to have some of the items that he's purchased. So I'm going to use that concrete, semi-concrete, and abstract because I'm going to use another line on the table. Now this is going back to that balancing math and literacy that we talked about. But I want to have that number line on the table so that they can be taking away the money as they go. And that's real easy to do because our yardsticks, if we flip them over, they have a hundred on the back, right? So we can use a yardstick for that and they can get that from there. So having that ability to have all of these things, this is Hattie's effect size saying, this is what we need for all of our kids, right? Because Hattie's effect size is that if we do this, this is like a 0 0.74. Like that's huge. Because anything above a 0 0.4 is what we want. All right. Anything you want to say? I know Angie does this all the time in her classroom, and she and I have been working together for a while on doing some semi-concrete and concrete stuff and how we pull it together. So she's been, she's been to several of my trainings. She's worked with me on, we worked with different things on how, to, how can we set this up for kids and what can that look like. And she actually did her PAN project because we know place value is a problem for all of our kids. So she did her PAN project around how can I bring in the CSA model for place value. Um, so C stands for concrete. That's our manipulative that we have something they can put their hands on. It does not always have to be the bead strings, the counters, it can be beads, it can be toothpicks, it can be craft sticks, it can be whatever they can touch and manipulate is that concrete. Now the semi-concrete, this is where we leave out and we do this really bad as teachers because I was one of those teachers. We leave this out because this is the part where the kid draws what's actually happening in the concrete world. Okay, this is that part and this is a problem for our visual kids because they can't really draw that right. But is there a way for us to give them an outline? like using uh, the wiki sticks for them to outline those things so they have that extra step in So the semi-concrete is the part that really puts it into the brain. That's what we know now. And when I draw something, I remember it better. So like I said, for our, our kids who need that visual thing, maybe we need to have them do outline those things, do those kind of things. And then the abstract is when we get into the symbols because the abstract is so confusing for our kids. What's a plus sign? What's a subtraction? What's an equal sign? Why are they mixed up in the problem? Right? Because the last time I checked, the equal sign comes in. And my kids will say that. I'm like, oh yeah. Why is this moved to the front? You know, why is there a box in there? Uh, all those things happen with their kids, and we have to be able to explain this. And getting into this part of it helps them to understand this part of it. And one thing, too, is a normal mind takes seven times of repetition. That's if you're, you know, normally, you know, functioning cognitively and all. So it takes more than that for students with disabilities. And I think sometimes that gets forgotten, um, especially students that are very low cognitively. Um, it needs to be more, you know, more repetition of it before you start taking things away because they don't seven times i mean i don't always get stuff seven after i've read something seven times or done it seven times that's just i don't know it's an average number that they came up with but um you know my students and, and myself included have to have more hands-on you know and this is not a linear thing so don't think, oh, I always have to start with the concrete, and then I have to do the semi-concrete, and then I'm gonna throw the abstract on it. That's not true. This is truly a circular, and I can do them all at the same time, and we can pull it together, because I want them, while I'm doing this, to see what that abstract is gonna look like down below it, right? Or I want it to be somewhere to the side where they can do it. I typically like the abstract below whatever they're working on, so we can actually mimic those numbers, right? So we've got a wonderful little board today, and I'll pass it up to you. You can make copies of it, whatever you want to. Vonda Adams and I created this board, um, and it is our CSA work map. And you can it. So it's really good. So you see it's got the concrete, the semi-concrete, and the abstract. So the kids are working here. I blew this up for a lot of my kids that I've worked with. 
Um, and made it into 11 by 14, you know, the 11 by 17, mm-hmm. yes, 11 by 17 yeah. size. And then if I've got kids who have trouble, I place wiki sticks over this. So wiki sticks are real easy to stick to things and they stay there really well. So it gives them that area that they know that they need to be working in. So this is one of them that we can use. So I'll go ahead and get these out. Do you want to take me on something? Yeah. I don't know where that's going. Where are they going? So, all the things that we can use, for, uh, well, how we can use it, first of all, let's talk about this. And it's in all of them. I mean, there's many ways. Yeah, this is not an exhaustive list. Counting, place value, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, fraction, algebra, and geometry. All of those things I have done, and I've even used them with statistics and probability. So, don't think that we're going to cut it off once they get to third grade. We see this so often. After third grade, the manipulatives go away and we don't pull them back out, right? But I want to say this much. I taught algebra in eighth grade. I worked with kids in ninth grade with algebra, and I pulled out the algebra tiles, right? I pulled out the beach string. I pulled out the unit excuse because they needed to be able to see what was happening in the algebra. We have to do that. Same things with statistics. You can pull out manipulatives to get them to understand that probability. We want to pull out the manipulatives to get them to see how we are actually doing the formulas. So these are just like a few of them. Things we can use them. Again, we said this is not an exhaustive list. This is a, these are a few things that the secretary of her house. <laughs> she teaches a little math. <laughs> And I, I do that so that my students don't grow dependent on a certain yes. thing. Because, you know, if that's the only thing they see, that's the only thing that they're going to try to use. And if they don't have it, they're going to shut down and not know what to do. So I use several things. Yeah. Our um, kids can't transfer knowledge, right? right? So they have trouble transferring that knowledge. So if the only thing I've ever used is teddy bear counters, they can't transfer that mind use counters. They can't transfer that mind use unit excuse. And it's hard for them to see it actually when we move to the abstract to be able to draw it. That's why we want to have all three of these things going as often as possible together. Um, I use the unit excuse to count on beach strings, base 10 blocks. Um, this year I have really use the base hand blocks because of just to teach them certain strategies. Well, when you see this, what do you know it is? Because when they when they see it, they know that a single block is a 10. You know, we've, we've discussed that and they know that and they count that, they feel that. So if I help this up to them and I'll say, what is this? How many do I have here? And they're about 10. I'm like, well, how, how do you know that's 10? You know, this is well because there's ten sitting in the box, and I use digits because that's a, that's another place that students I think when you talk about numbers, you know that there's only zero to nine digits, you know, and they don't understand. That's that's why I, that's how I start my first value is because that's one of the areas that I have noticed it gets lost, you know, because we go from teaching one thing and then just going into something. You know, and I don't think that they that they really understand the connection of the place value, and that, that's why I chose this because this year I've noticed with my younger students that that is an area that has really been hard for them, and I had noticed it before, but the kids were you know I thought fourth and fifth grade, so they already kind of with it. And number lines, geo six. So we were just uh, so we were talking about the unit fix cubes. Of course, you guys have all seen those. You've seen counters and what those look like, which is these. And then uh, I always use two color unit fix cubes. I try not to go past two colors with my kids, and I try to get something that is very uh, different in color. So if you have school colors like uh, some of was yellow and black, you can do yellow and black. But because I'm a math person, let's be honest, I like negative and positive numbers. And I know that if it's a negative number, it's going to be what? Red, right? And then if it's a positive number, it's going to be black. That also works with addition and subtraction. Because if I'm subtracting, I can lay that, that red back over top of the one that's filled. And then they can start to see the difference, right? 
we can do that. Plus, most of our bead strings, if you buy them, you don't you don't have to buy them. You can make them out of uh, pony beads. Is what we make them out of catfish line. You can make them out of those. Uh, I suggest catfish line that is waxed if you're going to do that, and it's really cheap. I mean, you can make lots of bead strings for less than ten dollars. So keep that in mind. Um, but with these, if you're using a bead string. They're in red and white, and if I'm working with numbers within 100, and I'm working with negative and positive numbers, kids in their fifth and sixth and seventh grades, uh, I pull these off, and one side's 50 of the white, and one side's 50 of the red, and it becomes a number line, just like their number line would look like. So they had that option to do that. Uh, algebra tiles, if you have not seen those, or maybe you guys have seen those. Well, I picked up a package, and I'm not picking up that package of algebra tiles over there. How did you look like this right here? So this is a package of student algebra tiles. And this is X squared. Why is that X squared? And the cool thing is, negatives are always red in algebra tiles, right? And positives are another color. So this is a negative X. And the reason this is a negative X is when the students go to put their wonderful things against this, uh, the, the ones, they'll realize that they can't match them up. Like they will, they match up at the end, so it's a one, but when we go to match them up, there's no specific number that matches on the side of it. And so this is our X, but this is an X squared because X squared is an X times an X. And so they can start to build those. I'll show some of those in a little bit to you guys. Uh, the other cool thing, she was working with place value. <laughs> Have you used place value dice? Which is what she was creating actually. So she was going through and creating them. They have place value dice. Now, I'm going to say this much about place value dice. I love these. I made the mistake of making the, my arrow cards that I was having them to use the same color as the dice. Guess what happens when kids use colors a lot? The they become dependent on the color. So when I took the color away and was just having my kids actually write the numbers, I couldn't read them. So we had to go back and I had to change out my arrow cards to where they were actually white in comparison to the place they got. So mistakes that we make and we learn from is one thing. Quiznery rods are a great way for teaching addition, subtraction, multiplication, fractions. So just another wonderful uh, tool to have. These are wiki sticks. And you get wiki sticks in multiple colors. If you have not used them or played with them. Uh, but you can get them in great colors to where they can actually stick to your stuff and, and move them around if you need them. Um, GL sticks, I didn't bring any today, but GL sticks, sticks are great for anything that you're doing in geometry, having the kids do back 3D shapes, those kind of things, GL sticks works for those kind of things. Um, and number lines, of course. We never want to give up a number line or a hundred chart because even though that's not the concrete, it is the semi-concrete and they are valuable in everything that we do. Thank God I'm not. Okay. Yeah. And you, one thing I always, I, I've started making sure that I do is at the beginning of the year when I introduce my number line, I also have my students learn to draw a number line because it's not beneficial for them for me to always have it. And then when testing time comes and they're not allowed to have something that they can all, you know, that's pre made, then they get, they, you know, they don't know how to do that. Yeah, well, they get I had a child that we were doing a number line, and he got mad at me and told his occupational therapist I was making him draw mountains. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sometimes we have to draw mountains. <laughs> um, I will say, don't write on your counters, don't write on your unity cubes, those kind of things. I made that mistake before uh, because then you can't use them at the end of the year on the test because if they've already been written on, you can't use them. And if you write on these and you give them a value, you can't use them for fractions that later on. So mistake number one, I've done that. I'm just going to say, you're learning from my mistakes today. Um, these are the craft sticks. Everybody's saying craft sticks. I always bundle them in groups of 10. I make the kids bundle them back in groups of 10. It's kind of like when I do unifix cubes, they always put them back in groups of 10. One, for getting that strategy to count to 10 over and over again. They start comparing. So now we got that comparison going. There's a lot of things that you can do for that. But I keep these in tens. We do this a lot with counting because 10, 20, 30, they continue to 
count right we cover who we pull out those kind of things and then they have to say okay i had 30 i cover it i pull out a 10 how many's there so they're doing that subtraction and they don't realize it yeah they haven't i mean they don't they just it's, it becomes automatic they just start mining. So I think we've covered kind of some things we've had in the rest yeah. of it. So you want to talk about your graphic organizer? Yeah. So I came up with this. Um, I start with the tens. Um, I don't. It doesn't have the hundreds on it. I didn't bring it in here with me, but it's at my station. Um, and then I always ha have the kids roll the dice. Roll. Um, I made in a color because at first I have to differentiate it. So I made the uh, my hundreds in red, and I wrote numbers on them. I did blue for my tens, and then these were already colored. I didn't do that. So Angie's not telling you how much work she really put into this. So uh -huh. those are actually just solid wooden blocks, is what she had, and she actually put them somewhere and painted them. I painted these, and then I wrote numbers on them with a um, paint marker. And it because marker comes off too easy. But yes, it took me and my daughter and I worked probably about three hours on making just a few. Um, and then one thing I learned really quick was that my students have very little hands. And so always using the little dice, it really takes a long time sometimes for them to count on them and know how many it is. So that's why I started with colors. Um, and I always start with hand. I don't start with my hundred jet and I'll do the ones in the hands. I have them actually put if they when they roll the dice well with their little hands i started you know the cereal cups that you you get at school mm -hmm. so i've started because i eat dry cereal sometimes i start saving them and washing them out so that's what i have them put their dice in one my rule is you shake it you dump it you don't sling it you don't you know because a lot of times they have their hand on it go um i'll create like a little circle and i'll say you know it's just it's not even a real circle i'll just say this is your area that's where your numbers go and of course the numbers you come out in different code you don't know how they're going to land so they have to put them in the correct order you know so my tens maybe i want my one should be you know so i have to order them and then i'll have them put over top so like the 10 the blue one would go here Ready to go here, and then y'all have to go there. Um, that way, they've got that. Big. Then once I have them to where they know the difference between the numbers, I just do the round lock, write the number on it, and have them all the same way. But they go and they'll go. So I start with it first. I'm like, I don't even give them the numeral yet. That's that's really even though it's first here. That's the last thing I do because I don't, they don't understand. If I tell them to fight, I say, okay, put 43. I mean, that's really defeating the whole purpose because I tell them what to put. So they roll the number and then they'll pick. Um, if I can fix 40, they got to put it in this spot. If it's three, they'll put it here. Then I have them use the Unifix box and I, I, I only give out nine each because if I give them 10, that's, again, defeating the purpose. In my, I mean, I just don't think that they wouldn't understand because I'm telling them you can only use nine of these. You can only use nine of these, even though they're ten. They're nine groups of ten. And that's how I talk to them about everything. This is one group of ones because how many is this? And I say one. And that, that goes back to them learning that this is one group of ten instead of, you know. And then they'll build it. And then once they build it, I'll say, okay, so how many hundreds did you have here? And they have that visual that they have to have three. So they'll put three. They don't put 300, they know to put three. Then they build the number. Mm -hmm. They buy it 300 mm -hmm. and so on. Um, then once they do that, then they add it and then they can put it in the And I'll say, okay, so look at your blocks, does it match? And then I'll like, yeah. And they're like, no. I'm like, then if they mess up, I'm like, okay, so what happened? How did we, how can we fix this? So we work it that way. And then once they get over with this, and they know how to use these, then I'll take these dice away and give them just regular brown dice. And it just, I'll still have the three numbers for my hundreds, like 300, 100, whatever. Two for my tens, and then just the ones for my one. And I still use these even though, and I tell them, you know, sometimes I'll even put the brown ones up, then they know that, then I'll take them that way and give them plain dice to where they have to count the number, you know, if it's a six or 
And then I also use the base that um, we place bag at least. Once they're ready for it, when they're when they've reached that. Um, but I haven't got to do that this year. They've not been right there. And the student that you will see that I work with, amazing. This, I mean, brought it all full circle for him. And he's he's low cognitively, so seeing him get it and grow with it, I I don't even do anything. He does. I say now, I don't want you using um, the the end of the, or the face down box. I want you to get, draw it for me. That's that's when I start doing that. So take that away, then I have you draw. And sometimes if they don't, if they're not getting it yet, they've got it. If they're not quite there. I will have them build up here, draw here, right here. So it's really more than showing it four ways, but. Yeah, that's, that's actually five. You've actually got six. Right, but they're getting each step, and I bring it all together at one time, and they don't even realize it. And so it's going to be cool later on for that lookout when you start just giving him just a tub of those, and then like do it now. And that's what I do. I do, I do that now with him. I just hand out the tape. I'm like, you're good. Show me what you can do. And he'll, he's even gotten to the point he doesn't roll the dice. He'll just make up his own numbers. And I don't build it. Oh, you could do uh, cards and just have them have to lay out like the next three cards. Mm -hmm. So you can just get playing cards and take all the jacks and oh, the kings and honey, I've done all that. Yeah. Okay. With my aces and things, I, I don't give them an ace and say this is a one because I wouldn't get that when I was that young either, and I don't know that they would. So I actually took um, some white stickers and placed over it and they're like, if it was a heart, I'll use that as a one. And if it's an ace, I cover it up, and that's a zero because there's nothing there. They don't see anything. So that's how <coughs> that works. Awesome. Okay. And then I use this a lot. It kind of goes in conjunction with that. It's just, you know, it's not the place value. It's more. Okay. But this is, uh, I've got concrete, so concrete. It can be used for anything. And that's the reason why we set that up that way, was just so it could be used for anything. That is wonderful. So other things that you can use, if you've never been on uh, Black Line Mastery, uh, Black Line Mastery has all kinds of like pen frames, and number lines, and dot cards, and all kinds of stuff, arrow cards, everything you can think of. So type in Black Line Mastery map uh, into Google, and it'll be really the first thing that pops up. And they have all kinds of different graphic organizers that you can use. The 10 frames are my favorite. I love this 10 frame here. Uh, I use 10 paintings with frames to teach proportions, by the way, so not just for like kindergarten and first. So you can use them at six, seven, and eight. Uh, but I use 10 frames a lot. I love the magnetic ones, these are pretty cheap, so that's a good thing about those. Uh, and I can get this one over. Yeah. I just don't know what happened this morning. This time I but they can mix them up. They can, if we're doing subtraction and Cover them up, they can cover up those kind of things with that. So I have them all the time, and they, they're working with those to make sure that they can actually use the different ones covering up if they need to or removing because removing shows subtraction too, helps a lot with those kind of things. And if I'm doing 10 frames and I'm using uh, proportions, and we all know it's out of a percentage of 100, this actually becomes 10%, 20%, 30%. 50%. And so, uh, if I'm doing something like what is one half of a hundred, the student's going to actually take and to determine how much is that, they would have half, and they would see there's 50 up here. And they can actually put a hundred beans in there if they needed to. Or if you're trying to figure out uh, like what is the percentage of this. And so they would lay out all the beads in the 10 frame and then they could find the percentage. So there's different ways. If you want more information on that one, that can take a little bit longer time to explain, but I promise you it's a great way for our kids to visually see proportions. So if you want more information, just contact me and I will gladly put you in the right direction for those. Uh, the 10 frames are a great way. In uh, algebra, I use expression maps. And so you see there's positive and negative numbers. And so the students, begin to understand when I've got a positive 
uh, adding a negative, we have to zero pair it out and they find that. I also use, besides that, I use a balance beam. And so the kids can start to see it with the balance beam. I had one student who loved his heart. I thought I would pull my hair out before we figured it out. That answers. It was just it was just a bad day. Uh, but anyway, we had done things with uh, we've done the, the unity cubes, of course. I had used a number line, we had walked it, we had done everything I could possibly think of, and he just was not getting it. And so I sat down at my, at my desk at the end of the school day and I was like, I'm just done. He has to know this. And he was an FND student, but he had to know it for alternative assessment. He doesn't know our alternate assessment targets are basically the same thing as what our regular standard targets are. So um, I was like, he's got to get this. There is no way we cannot get this this year. And so I was, was sitting there and I looked up and happened to I had one of those balance beams. I actually had the numbers on the slide that you hang, right? Uh, and I thought, okay. That's a number line, but it balances. And I was like, how can I make him understand this side is negative and this side is going to be positive? That's why I was confused about something. I just ended up finding a red pipe cleaner and gluing it to the negative top side. And that was the one thing he could use to understand the addition and subtraction. We even used it for multiplication and division. So getting that option out there. One way that we do it may not always work. You're going to have to do it multiple times. You know, she talked about our kids, typically we say seven times, right? But our kids, we know nine, 10, 11, 12 times sometimes, 30, <laughs> have to have that repetition. So it's okay if they're not getting it the first time. Give them an option. They may not be able to distinguish in the colors that we're using, so we may have to change it. So that's another thing. And wait, how many people are yeah, big deal for them. So that's an expression map. That's one of them that we can use. This is the equation map I use. And it gets the kids thinking about uh, those negative and positives when they're on an equation. So this would be the first part of my expression, and this would be the rest of it to make the equation where the answer is. And so they would have to work on find the value of x. Um, so that's another one that we use. So these are just some graphic organizers that we can go through. Go through that one there teaches, we've all seen this. Has anybody here used like a window method in multiplication? I've seen it done. Okay, so if you've seen it done, you know the window method works. This is the same thing. So let's say it's 2x times 3. So 2x goes here, and I would put my 2x's here. I would do 3 here, and then we would just fill in, right? It's the same thing with the window method. And so they use this to help them see that. We can do the same thing with uh, and So we're going to try some things. Do we have time? Yeah, we've got 20 minutes. Okay. We're good. I couldn't remember what time it was. I was like, I think it's fine. We're presenting minutes. after you, so if you need more time. Oh, that means like. I got like, too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll try some things. Right. So we're going to try some things. So let's just look at, she's going to, uh, we can use her uh, plots. We're going to try these and just work through some. And I'm going to show you real quick about that window method and what I was talking about for that. So, hopefully, we'll do a paper out there this morning. This is a paper out there. Do you want your other parts back? Or no, that's not. You can keep them back. You can keep those. You want your winky sticks back? No. You just handed everything out today? You can't have a race. Listen, oh, okay. well, <laughs> listen, you painted those for how many hours? We definitely <laughs> let you keep those. Because the winky sticks are our best friend in the vision world, though, like for real. We use these to like outline everything. The what are the winky sticks? Mm -hmm. I have maps because I can't see the lines, so we love winky sticks. That is world. one thing I did not have. Really? Mm -hmm. well, well, there's a I know, but I know. I'm so excited about that. I was like, I was like, can we get the key to you? Yeah. Okay, so I want to show you guys and demonstrate. Uh, have you seen the big string? Okay, you've already seen this. Have you seen I've not seen it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to demonstrate the big string so you guys can see it. Um, 
Uh, sorry, can scratch. Oh, you're fine. So 32 plus 25. So of course these are in 10. So I'm going to very quickly go 10, 20, 30, 2, right? 32 plus 25. So 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 but now I can quickly add 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 57. And one thing they will do is say, well, that's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Yep. And they will do that. And then you have to do the same. So okay, but look, do I have, yep. How many do I have here? Number five. And having a um, closed pin? Yes. I thought I could have one in my bag. I'll probably do it in my bag. I think I have one in my bag. I'm not sure. My bag's fine. I have multiple clothes pins, as well I do. And so, as the kids are pulling over, actually 25 would be clipped, and the next one will be clipped, and the other ones will be clipped way over here. Right? So, that's the reason why this is here. If we get three times six, that says I've got three groups of six, right? Because we got to use that vocabulary for kids and math. So, we're going to pull over six. There's five. There's six. I'm going to pull over six more. Because now I need. There's a group of six, and then I'll pull over six more. And then there's a group of six. Now, what will happen is some of our kids will be like, oh, I got two left. And they'll say, take away two, 18. Right? They'll start to do that subtraction part. But they can see this is 10, and then I can count that. And so they'll count one at a time. Or they'll count one at a time. And that's okay, too. I had a kid, uh, I loved it. He was in my room, he's worried about nines. And he was doing nines, so he did this one. The next time, and he was like, <laughs> and then he came over and he was like, he kind of over. And he kept on looking, and he goes, This kid, you know what this is? And I said, What? And he goes, It's just that number subtracted. And I said, What do you mean it's just that number subtracted? He goes, Well, it's like a 10, and I'm just taking that number away. And I said, Really? And so he started to. Explained that to me, and I was like, Well, he's got it now, so I don't worry about it. But he finally, but he was using this, right, to do it, and he finally got it. And he was like, Yes, I know how to do my multiplications with math now. We had fit with nines, and we've even done that little thing of where you do the numbers down and numbers back. We've done all kinds of things, but it took him actually. He was just doing his nines that day, right, working on his nines. And the strategy I use is I have little whiteboards, and I had 10. On, I have 10, like a group of red and a group of white or black, whatever. I think mine are actually red and black on a um, elastic string, yep. I think, and hide to my board. And I'll do 10 of those. So if that's 100, and they can, they know that, okay, well, this is, well, it's actually five of one color and five of another, but they know that, that that's how you do how I start. You go little. Yeah. yeah. So I start with my fives, then I move to my tens. I say, so how many is this all in all? And I go 10. And I've even taken my cubes, my uh, face hand blocks, and laid it. And I say, oh, wow, they're almost the same size. Because, you know, speeds are really <clears throat> fatter. But they, and then they started recognizing, oh, okay. So they start getting things. The more you use it, the more they get it. So let's say we got 28. So this is 28. And so I'm going to pull this one over there to you. And so it says I'm going to divide it into groups of seven, right? So my kids are going to pull off seven. There's one group. I'm going to pull off seven. There's two groups. Pull off seven. And there's seven. And then I've got one, two, three, four. So 28 divided by seven is four. So they can do that without a problem. You can do it with the number line too. Now, I've written the numbers in the number line. So let's do this next one. 2x plus one, uh, 5 is 23, right? So let's pull over 23. Now it says I've got five. I've added five. So let's take that five away over here, right? And now I've got to divide these into fair shares because that two X means I'm fair sharing, right? Me and my friends. So we're going to fair share. And we fair share out. And my X is literally nine. And so we can do many things with just the one object. And if they get comfortable with it, it's fine because 
really this this is something I could use any time if I needed to, you know, the polisher. I just had them hanging on my door. Like literally by my door was hoops and I just had bead string hanging. And so they knew if they needed them, they could go get them. I also had one made out of appropriated golf balls because they're cheap at the end of the season. I'm just gonna say this. That went all the way across my from the top of my door to the other side. And our little guy, you know the one I'm talking yeah. about who just won yeah. big time. Um, I had a way to pull that down and drop it down here so he could do it when he was this big, literally. So he used it all the time because they were bigger and he could walk with them. And so he loved doing that. Uh, he had a visual impairment and so he really used that a lot. He would be like, will you drop my bead string? And it was his bead string, it wasn't anybody else's bead string, but we would drop the bead string. And he knew that I could do it and he was ready to go and he had his little clips and he could do that. And then, you know, I had one of these in my classroom. Okay. So, it's there in the environment. So, I need the one to carry around. And you can still need to work backwards. You should, like, she thought that, you just, just work backwards. Yeah. Really. And I love that. Like, a lot of our kids don't know that you can do that. Yeah. You're yeah. 23, yeah. and you're going to yeah. do the opposite until you get, like, but do you know how many times I'm younger? You know, how many times have you sat in the classroom and taught your yeah. kids to count forward? One, two, three, four. How many times she can go back? Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. That's something that we forget to do. Yeah. And I have become like two years ago, it hit me like smack in the face because yeah. I have never got, done that to myself ever. And I'm sitting there like, here's what well, I set them up for failure. You know? Yeah. Well, I, I think I've already told her that before that she. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it wasn't. <laughs> maybe it was <laughs> I didn't seem like it was yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, you've been a little while now. Well, seven years. And this is another graphic organizer that I use for our kids if I'm doing uh, uh, integers, right? Quick and easy because guess what? It's just got plus and minus on it. And I've got a plus add for here because if you lay this on a number line, um, from your all's point of view, which way is my uh, positive going, which way is my negative going? And so positive numbers are going, you know, and negative numbers are going this way. And so what we do is we just allow this to move as it needs to on the thing. So if we're doing, uh, let's say it's plus three, right? So let's, let's just say it's three plus negative four. So we're going to add three. So we move over three, right? And then it says, oh, it's going to go negative four. Well, where's the negative sign? I'm going to go four. I go back, I don't have negative one. So they just use this on the number line to move the vehicle. Yeah, that would be really so, nice to just hand out to the whole class and just throw them Yeah. Like, but remember, to you're favorite. purposely teaching it to the child is the eye, right? Right. I'm purposely and I'm teaching it. Okay. I'm going to throw that out. That's, so a, hard, the eye, that's a harder task, I think, in the classroom right now. Like they're not understanding positive and negative. Oh yeah, but, but as a hard. class, not our just our kids. I'm saying as a class. It was a hard concept. Yes. I mean, like I said, I, for, the, for my little kindergartners and my first grader and my second graders, place value has about to been my total this year. But they're getting it. If I'm, we got three people in here. They're going to all pick a number between one and twenty. You're going to put a number in their head. They're going to give away that number line today. Okay. No, I'm thinking it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> so, give me a number between well, 1 to 20. We'll start with you. Me? Yeah. Seven. 11. I'm sorry, you want it? That's <laughs> <laughs> okay. She said 11. And she's got uh, 10. So, what's your number? 12. 12. Oh, well, there you go. It was a little higher. <laughs> I don't have one of those. I don't have one of those. 
Do you want it in your room? Oh, uh, yes. We got plenty of kids there, too, so. So, number one that we use all the time on these natives, and I'm going to say this right now. If I'm giving this one, if you've got students who are doing natives, make sure these are in red when you first start out, right? Because they need that color for me. <laughs> Um, make sure these are in black because they need that too. Like, it's just such a. I also do these with puff paint, okay? Because they need to feel it. They need to belt over those members and know where they're going. So instead of just using that stick, we just put a post it note on their finger with the positive and the negative. And so you'll see a little positive sign here and a negative sign here. Guess what? On the back is a negative sign on this side and a positive because if I'm subtracting, I just flip it over. And then I'm going in the direction it needs to be. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm going to save you a bunch of time with okay. puff paint. So the School for the Blind actually makes the number lines where you have to oh. with the numbers raised and everything. And they come in like a pack of like 30 for like $2 or something. Really? Really? And yes. And the like the whole line is packed. Like the I line's tacked up, I know, because unless they're visually impaired, it's like an unknown thing, but the whole line's tacked up with localities. But can I order, like can yeah, any of us as yes. teachers order it? Yes, but if you have a QBI, they can get them for free for you. Okay. You don't even have to order them. Like, they can sign you. Yeah. 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 Yes. You can get them for free. Like, we can order your TBI for your account, you can get them for free. But if you don't have, like, a TBI, you can go on American Printing House for the Line and order them, and they're really cheap. Awesome. Yes. Yeah, because... Listen, the pack towel is so good. Yes. And they come in Do different they colors. Like they come in like just, I don't know about the negative because when I was looking at it, I haven't seen the negative, but they have like one to 20, one to 50, one to, and they have them in odds, even, it's like just different things. But do they have them in fractions too? Because I've done them with puff paint in fractions. I don't know about fractions. Because they have different things for fractions. Because that would be awesome if we had something that is in fractions. Because I've used it with fractions and like, where the students like this the whole number line would be two, right? And yes. so one would be here and zero. And then I would have different fractions inside of those. So that they can start they to see how the to go the on that. Like, right. So I just spent like all that time to make that tactile step. Yeah. And you can already order. That would be awesome. I did not know we could do that. So that's something I did not know. I learned something today. I'm excited. But <laughs> so on the back of your number line, if you how many of you have to teach uh counting with points? Okay, so if you have to teach counting with coins, this is your friend. Because this goes actually above a dollar. A dollar is 100. We know that, right? We need our kids to know that. One dollar is 100. So actually, this 120 is a dollar 20. Alright, so we want them to do that. But, I did not bring any, and I'm sorry, uh, I didn't think about it. I, I've got my pennies out, so if we're ever counting to 100 and I'm in the little group, I have my pennies out because that's what we're doing. We're like pennies on here because that's good that they understand. So we, all my pennies are in one container. Um, but I use pennies, I use beads, I use Unifix cubes. Unifix cubes fit perfectly on these things so that kids are stacking them. Um, I had the kids, we, we covered the board with, because um, these are really easy to wash, we covered the board with Cool Whip and the kids get to mop it off as they're doing it and then they can lick their fingers if they want to do those kind of things, you know, they don't have to do. We all know this. Uh, we've done crazy stuff. It's great. Um, those are uh, some things to make sure they don't have any food allergies, though, of course. So, we've got some quarters here. We don't usually use half dollars, but we've got some quarters. We've got some deals. We've got a couple of dimes here. And so, we know that our kids on uh, those wonderful worksheets, they'll get, you know, just some uh, random amount they have to count. We know this. But if you can, just give them a random amount. Right? And so they've got the tactile here for them. And I think it's open as top three. And I have no name. Um, so let's say they got a quarter, two nickels, and maybe some dimes here if we can ever get these open. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. Said now to send the link to you. They have they come with five raised line tactile number lines of number zero to ten, number zero to twenty, and then they come with five Raise line tactile number lines with 11 blanks, so you can make it whatever you want. Oh, gosh, right. Tony, because she's going to help me out. We did this one. I just sent you the link for it. Oh, you're going to the summer? We need those. It's $27, so I guess it's more expensive, but it has to come with, there's a bunch of braille ones too, if you can't get them okay. separated. So, 
So let's say, and I've got, I've got three dots. Okay. So I always tell my kids to, to sort them out in the biggest amount to the smallest amount that they do not have to, right? So as long as they know that a quarter is 25 cents, they can go and put the quarter on 25 cents, right? Then they got another quarter. Well, hopefully you know the two quarters is 50, but if they don't, they can count up another 25 and go 50, right? And so I'm trying to show you so much. Then I've got a dime. So I know dimes are 10, and if we're good at this point, right, we can just go up 10. Now they may not be able to, so they're gonna count up 10, they're gonna light this on there. Now, another dime would be 70. And let's say that we went off to our Nicholas now, and they know that's five, so they count up five, they put it on there, they get another one, that's a nickel, that's five, and if they have some pennies, they can add it to it, and guess what, I'm at 80 cents. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah, I don't know why she charged she, for it. She did all now. <laughs> I see. I see. <laughs> so anyway, this is one good way to teach your kids to count. I like that. Uh, so, any other questions that we have? That's a good one. Hold on, I'm going to start to get to count points. Oh, the more actions. It's a good one. Thank you. So, and then games you can play. Yes. Aren't these are great. Shake and spiel. Does anybody here play shake and spiel? So go to the Dollar Tree, buy you a uh, evenly divided little container because their kids fight about which side they've fallen on. And so they just literally shake and spill, and then that becomes the number. So let's say I've got in my cup, uh, in my cup is eight cubes, right? Because we're working on that right. So we shake over eight, we dump them in their own container, it spills, and it's five and three. So how did I make eight? Five and three. Put eight back in, I shake it again, and then I make eight because it's going to change, right? This time it'll be three and five. And so, shake and spill is a really good one for them. You can buy the container that has a divider and then shake it, like turn it upside down, shake it, and flip it, and you'll divide it. Yep. On that one. So, there's those. Wall is really cool. So, you pick a number within one to ten, and they have to lay this out like it's a wall. So they're going to lay these out in front of them, like this, with spaces for their hands in front of them. Now our little kids are sitting down here, so they can't really see over the wall. That's the cool thing about it. So I'm, I did five, and you just say a wall four. So if they automatically know to go here, they already had that concept of five. We can move on to another number. But if they go, and then they do this, and you say, what's on the other side? Remember, they can't see that, right? So they may say nothing, because they can't see it. And then you're going to say, well, what makes it five? And then they have to think. And then you, if they say one, then you say check. And they just pull it up and then check. It gets that subtraction part that's so hard for our kids to do. Um, the game of war, that's done with the meat string. Let me borrow your meat string. You already put it up. You have a meat string before you can grab it. Oh, that's a perfect thing. I didn't know you did. Anyway, with the game of war, I'm going to tell you how to do it. You're going to go back to back with a partner. Come here, Chad. You just walk around here. So Chester and I are going to be back to back. We've got the bead string, right? I know Chester and I can pull off some. It's her fiber. So, it's her fiber. So, <laughs> so I know her pull off some. She grabs whatever amount. I just put my way. Would you like one? Um, and so then what happens is she's got so many. I can count mine and I have to guess how many is hers. Right? So let's do this. Now we got to watch it. All right. Fast, grab some. However many you want. And so I count on, and I say, oh, I've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 1, 2, 3, 4. So you must have, let's see, it takes 6 to make 8, uh, 26, and then she gets the count. 10, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, And so they start making that friendly together, right? So that's the game of war. And you can also do the 10 frame cards with the dots. Yes. And so keep it within 20 is the kids just have cards and they're like down and they have to keep the addition and subtraction if it's a uh, red number it's a subtract so it's a subtract and if it's a uh, the black numbers then it's of course uh, positive and it's add and so they have to add and subtract and keep it within 20 to the end of the day and that's fun to watch because our kids can't do that I'm telling you it's really hard it gets to a point where you go west but think about the number of problems that work in that amount of time. 
So you can do that same thing and keep it within 100 and do multiplication. Yes, all right, that's all. Woo, we're good. So resource, and I didn't make any fun of you. Mm -hmm. I think you wouldn't let them out one minute to give these ladies time to transition. Well, we talked about these steps. It was actually not steps all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I hate to even ask if the district bought these for me? I've got to get these. About all the stuff. Sorry. Sorry. No, that's okay. I I'm 